proceeded to have good lives, but they were in a constant struggle to take each other's land. Danaeus ended up with 50 daughters, and Aegyptus had 50 sons. To our respectable brothers, it seems that we have both had the good fortune to have been blessed with so many strong and beautiful children. After careful consideration, I have come to the conclusion that there could be no finer match than one between your daughters and my magnificent sons. Where else could you find such a perfect opportunity to marry them off? You did have 50 of them, after all. May the goddess Hera bestow her favor upon this grand wedding to be, and may he heartily consent to my proposition. Doubtless, you will find my sons to be the ideal suitors, King Aegyptus. I cannot allow this. My daughters will not be exploited. They will not marry those awful men. My dears, I may have to surrender my land, but you will stay with me. Danaeus goes to Argos, the birthplace of, of his great-grandmother, Io, with his fifty daughters. Being the rightful heir, he became king of Argos and reigned there happily for many, many years. He may have escaped once, but he will not do it again. My sons, I am sending you to Argos. Do not return till you have taken the damage as your wives. And so the sons of Egypt set out to Argos. Damage, we are here to marry your daughter. What is this madness? Absolutely not. Alright then, as you wish. You have no choice but to wage war. Wait! No! No, 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 no. I cannot let you ruin my beautiful Argos. I have no choice but to give you my daughter's hand in marriage. So they plan for the wedding. It is a small, obscure wedding day, even though it is between royalties. The night before the wedding. My poor, poor daughters. I can't let this be your fate. Here, take these knives. At midnight. Each of you will sneak up on your betrothed and stab him. Stab him wherever you want, I don't care. If you do what I ask of you, we will never have to suffer through Egyptus' tyranny ever again. At the stroke of midnight, the sisters crept up on their husbands. Each lifted her dagger and, with great remorse, murdered their husband. <laughs> Taking their severed heads, the Danaids crept into the night and buried them in Lerma, all but one. Hypermenestra. Lentius, wake up! Wake up! Huh? My father wants me to end your life, but I love you. Let us run away, quickly. I understand. Thank you for taking this, Yami. Why did you not kill your wretched cousin, Lentius? I should have you tried in court for such a betrayal. Aphrodite, who was watching, took pity on Hypermnestra. She wished to pull a girl away, hiding her with Lentius. This is terrible. Despite my mother's actions, they're still my flesh and blood. I can't let their deaths go unavenged. And so he set out to kill Danaeus. And he did. <laughs> and that is that. Hypermnestra and Lentius lived happily ever after as the new king and queen of Argos. Meanwhile, deep in Hades were Hypermnestra's 49 sisters, hoping fervently to wash away their wrongdoings in the fields of punishment. They were condemned to fill a basin using seas for all eternity. <laughs> <laughs> 